Marion County, John Doe, 1985. Identified as Don Boardman. Don Boardman was 35 and a successful businessman. He had gone to Atlanta, Georgia for a conference in November of 1985. And he was really excited to drive his brand new 1985 Chevy Camaro with gold trim. Then he suddenly disappeared with the car, his jacket, and his credit cards. He was eventually recorded missing to the Chambly Police Department. Weeks later, his car was spotted, and once they pulled it over, they discovered two men and a woman inside, along with Don's missing jacket and his credit cards. But Don wasn't there. One of the people in the car had an extensive criminal record, and he owned his own body shop. Sadly for Donald, there was no justice regarding his murder because his remains were missing. And even though the authorities were sure it was a botched carjacking and that Don had lost his life, they had no idea where he was. He'd barely even gotten to drive his new car. Unbeknownst to the authorities, he was discovered only 23 days later on December 16, 1985, in Marion County, Tennessee, which is about two hours away. A fisherman had discovered a partial skeleton in a creek near Interstate 24, and while they didn't disclose the cause of death, it was ruled a homicide. This is one of those that was solved by people a lot like you and I, who are interested and dig around a little bit. The case was put together by a stay-at-home mom who lived in Marion County, named Barbara King Ladd. She had read an article about the murder victim. She took it upon herself to check missing person sites from Tennessee and neighboring states. And it was she who pinpointed the similarities between the Marion County John Doe and Donald Boardman. She said she found it striking, which is actually pretty amazing because I had trouble finding his recreation online. My guess is she found it in a local paper. She then messaged the Chambly police on their Facebook page, and an analyst took her seriously. They were able to track down Donald's sister in Florida and received a DNA sample from her. And it was with his sister's DNA that he got his name back in May of 2022. By the time of Donald's identification, the two men that were found in the car had since died. The authorities are looking for the woman that was known to be in the car at the time in hopes of getting more information. Don Boardman died because evil men and a woman wanted to possess his new car. He went unidentified for 36 years. The Philadelphia John Doe, 2019, identified as Rashid Young. Rashid was a 22-year-old trust fund heir, living off a $2 million inheritance when he went missing in August of 2019. It was that month that Rashid got into a fight outside of his apartment with his boyfriend, a man named Kishan Sheffield. It's now believed that the fight led to Sheffield using a knife to take Rashid's life. He got away with it for a while too, by destroying Rashid's apartment, leaving holes in the wall and the floor, and flooding the area. He followed this by using Rashid's phone to digitally impersonate him and make his family and friends believe he was alive. But like all others before him, there's only so much you can do digitally to keep that lie going. However, in the four months he managed, he was able to steal thousands and thousands of dollars, and he went so far as sending DMs to family members while pretending to be his victim. It was the following months that Rashid was found in the Aubrey Arbitorium in Philadelphia, he was buried on the property. No one suspected, however, that it was Rashid until a private investigator hired by his family began to believe it was. He was identified in June of 2022 once his dental records confirmed his identity. Keyshawn Sheffield was brought in for questioning and he quickly caved to pressure and he admitted his part in the crime. It didn't help there was proof of his impersonation still on the phone. Keyshawn Sheffield has been charged with first-degree murder. The bank records show that in between July and December of 2019, someone, likely Sheffield, made 15 different bank transactions. Rashid Young went unidentified for nearly three years. 
the Clarksburg John Doe, also known as Chester, identified as Jerron Gibson. 29-year-old Jerron Gibson was from Sacramento, California, which is about three hours away from Clarksburg. Not much more is known about Chester than we know of Jerron now. He was believed to be of mixed race and had a degenerative disease in his neck and his lower back. He was wearing a shirt that originated from a designer known for the brand Mustard Seed Faith, and they were being sold out of kiosks in Sacramento, California. They also knew he had suffered a break to his nose, which had healed. Other than this, someone had used a knife on him, abandoning his remains near a blue sleeping bag. There's no concrete evidence it was his sleeping bag or if he was even homeless at the time. However, it appears no one reported Jerron missing. It was Parabon Nanolabs that identified him in June of 2022. Jerron Gibson went unidentified for 23 years. Had he been allowed to live, he would be 52 today. The Skykomish Jane Doe, identified as Alice Lou Williams. Alice Williams was staying at a cabin in Lake Loma when she went missing under what was described as mysterious circumstances in 1981. Nearly three decades after Alice went missing, some U.S. Forest Service surveyors discovered a partial human skull in a steep ravine near Beckler Road, north of Skykomish, Washington. On October 10, 2009, they searched widely all around the area but found nothing else. No more remains, no clothing, no jewelry, or any artifacts that may have belonged to her. A forensic anthropologist performed testing, placing the age of the woman to be over 40. It was hard given how little there was to even examine, not even enough for her race. Even the time it had been there was nearly impossible to determine. The post-mortem interval was placed at one year to decades. They entered her into the NCIC database, which is the National Crime Information Center. This is the FBI's computerized index that tracks crime and missing persons. She was also entered into NamUs, the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System. NamUs is a federal database funded by the National Institute of Justice. This database lists unidentified remains as well as missing persons. It also now acts as a clearinghouse for fingerprints, dental files, and DNA. In 2010, they were able to do a DNA extraction, adding her DNA into CODIS. There were no matches. If you are missing a loved one, please contact NamUs. That is the first place the authorities will look if they find someone who may be your loved one. They will usually take the DNA from two separate family members if available. If you are not missing a loved one and you want to help, it is GEDmatch and FTDNA that you can upload your DNA to and allow it to be searched. That can be hugely helpful even if you are not aware of anyone in your family being missing. It's one step closer to someone who is. If you need help in doing this, please leave a message and I will help you. Unfortunately, in this case, there was no match in NamUs for the decedent, and they worked on using genetic genealogy through the DNA Doe Project, and it was put indefinitely on hold. It doesn't say why, but usually this means that GEDmatch, or for FTDNA, didn't have enough family members that were close enough in scope to try and narrow it down. Thankfully, Othram Labs, which is at the forefront of many of these identifications, was able to narrow it down, finally identifying the Jane Doe as Alice Williams after finally reaching Alice's adult children. Alice was 53 when she went missing in 1981 from Marysville, Washington. So when her cranium was found in 2009, she had likely been there for 28 years already. Donna Roth, Alice's daughter, released the following statement. It has been 41 years since she disappeared from my parents' Lake Loma cabin. The only person who could supply any information to the investigators was my father. He was the last person to see her. Our family became broken over her disappearance, and that wound has never healed. In closing, I would like to thank my mom for her love and devotion. 
also for teaching hard work and dedication, and for leading the way for my own family. She will always be remembered in our hearts. Her cause of death obviously could not be determined due to the circumstances, which is why it's so important if anyone has any information at all, please call the number on the screen. Alice Lou Williams went missing for 41 years. She went unidentified for 12. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. If you could help to get the channel noticed by the YouTube algorithm by liking and leaving a comment, even if you can just leave a thumbs up or some emoji, it counts as engagement. It would be so appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks everyone. Take care of yourselves and each other.